Welcome to Morning Manor with Pastor Steve Mary. Today's topic, strength through the crisis. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not dismayed. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, Work it for us, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 9, and verse 17. At this point in time, we are facing something that the world has never seen before, and we don't readily have all the answers. However, God has always prepared His people to be able to survive any situation that comes. We've seen Joseph adjust and became the Prime Minister of Egypt. We've seen the same with Daniel and even Esther who became Queen. God's church is resilient. No wonder the songwriter said this is the church triumphant. In many ways, this is a very discouraging time for the people of God. Any problems that existed has now been increased tenfold. And while members of a congregation are finding it difficult, I submit to you, that pastors are having it even more difficult at this time. Because now we have to be preaching more than we've ever preached. We have to be ministering to folks individually more than we have ever done. And I submit as well that amidst all the thousands of people that are dying in the world, and even though the economy is on the brink of a collapse, there are folks in church who are still going to find time to keep malice. There are folks in church who are still going to find time to hate and to backbite and to cause all sorts of trouble. And pastors still have to be pastors. So the question comes, who encourages the encourager? We have to be able to see God in whatever state of life we're in. We have to be able to not just look at the glass as being half empty, but look on it as being half full. So where do I get my encouragement from? Well, let me just share two with you. One of my main source of encouragement is having devotion with my wife. It is just a blessing to sit and be ministered to because I too have my own struggles. I too have my own insecurities. And so that's one of my main sources of encouragement amidst whatever I may be going through. And second, the people of God. This pandemic has brought a great change in our lives, one that is pretty difficult to adjust to. There's nothing harder for a preacher or a teacher than after you've preached so much, then you realize that the people go the opposite direction. God has blessed me the flock where though there are negative people there, I do not focus on that. I look on the positives that they're doing. During the period of time when we were cut down to only 10 persons, I witnessed the faithfulness of God's people, the musicians and singers and moderators and ushers who came Sunday after Sunday to make sure that there were 10 of us there to have service, to be able to stream online. When the adjustment was made to having two shifts, I've seen faithful Sunday school teachers sometimes having to teach two shifts. I've seen a couple who have a newborn and they will take turns each Sunday as to who stay home and who come to church. I've seen another couple with a newborn who the husband would come to church on Sunday and then during our Thursday night services on Zoom, he would keep the children so that his wife can attend that service online. It is an amazing thing to see with all the difficulties that are happening and people losing their faith and people turning away from God. To be in church and getting ready to close the first shift and when you look outside, you see people already there waiting for their shift. It's an amazing feeling. I have seen the best in God's people. When you found that secret place, it takes you to a greater level of spiritual maturity. So this is why when Paul said in verse 17, our light affliction, imagine all of what we are going through. Imagine the challenges that we face, but then Paul calls it light. Paul is making reference that we have an in spite of God, a God who is still God amidst everything that may be happening. So instead of focusing on the negatives of life, we should focus on the positive things. Give thanks for the good things that are in your life. Give thanks that you've got good children. Give thanks that you've got good friends. Give thanks that you've got a good prayer partner. Give thanks that you're able to leave work and go to the fasting service. We have so much to be thankful for. Paul said, we are troubled, but at the same time, not distressed. We are perplexed, but yet we're not in despair. We may be persecuted, but yet we're not forsaken. He said we might be cast down, but yet we're not destroyed. We are overcomers, and no matter what the enemy tries, we are going to survive because God has equipped us with the strength through this crisis. The quote of the day, find a reason to be thankful. 
Just before I go, another thing that I'm thankful for is that today my wife and I are celebrating 13 years of marriage. There have been ups, there have been downs, but God has been good. God bless you today, in Jesus' name. Please remember to like and subscribe to my page on YouTube. Your support is much appreciated. We make a miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness.